What do we have for Gemini? Four of Wands, Aries energy at the foundation, and the Devil Capricorn energy at the sacral. This is very interesting, Gemini. The message I was getting for you, uh, and I actually wrote this down, okay? And these cards are illustrating this precisely. But the message I wrote down for you was there's a lot of people trying to critique what you're doing, but these are the same people that are doing absolutely nothing. And these are also people that should be seemingly supporting you, which is telling me it could be people very close to you. Now, this Four of Wands, Aries energy, in this depiction, we're seeing a vantage point from this sort of onlooker perspective, right? This is you. Four of Wands is all about celebration. It's an energy of excitement. So this could have something to do with the space you're working inside of right now. But I feel for most of you, it's a direction that you're planning on going or quite possibly talking about going. And, you know, I've also been picking up in all of the readings this astrological transit that we're sitting in right now, which is Pluto at zero degrees Aquarius. This is a major astrological transit. And all of us are sort of at this point right now where we know the direction we should be going, but there's this sort of unsure energy or there's an unsupportive energy around you. There's just something that's holding you back from taking this leap into this new timeline. So there's that. But what I'm getting here is somebody watching you, right? And then look who we have watching you. The devil. But there's somebody watching the devil. See, it's interesting I picked up this deck of cards as well. I actually didn't mean to do that. I meant to pick up my regular Rider Waite tarot deck, which, you know, that's interesting that I flipped over the Three of Wands there because that Three of Wands is also speaking about this energy. But I picked up this deck for a reason, and the reason being is so we can see these perspectives, these vantage points here you are, stepping into this energy of celebration, and then here's the devil, that opposing energy, that family member, that ex, whoever it is for you, they're being watched by the divine, and they don't even know it. And that devil is right at that sacral position. So for those of you that are dealing with an ex, this is somebody who's very toxic, uh, somebody who's quite possibly watching you move forward in your life without them picking up this overactive sacral chakra energy coming from them, very overly emotional, very manipulative. As we can see here, the devil also looks like, I mean, he's got his wings out. It's like he's preparing for liftoff. It's giving me the impression that they're planning something here. So if this is future energy with this four of wands at the foundation, this is somebody who has a plan to stop you. And their whole purpose here is to get you to self-sabotage. That's how the devil gets you. So they can turn around and say, see, I told you so. I knew that wasn't the right path for you. Something like this. And I just heard misery loves company. You're very much between realms right now, Gemini. That's really what this astrological transit is as well with Pluto at zero degrees Aquarius. It's like we're standing on the precipice of this major change in our life. But you're being called here to stay the course. It's like you're in the 11th hour. You're right there. And you're being flooded with some sort of negative projective energy. Or this could be self-doubt flooding through which is all based off of this negative projective energy, again, as a means to get you to self-sabotage. But it's very important, Gemini, that you believe in yourself now more than you ever have in your entire life. Because I feel that where you are at is going to determine the rest of your life moving forward. And, you know, one might argue that every moment determines the rest of your life moving forward. But this one is very significant because it feels like you're at some sort of crossroad. One way leads you directly into the future, into an energy of alignment. And the other way leads you down a path that looks like it's heading towards something positive. But then as you get further down that road, it starts 
veering around, and before you know it, you're heading back south. You've been detoured. There's somebody here who's trying to intercept your higher guidance. Whoever this person, people, whatever it is, Gemini, underneath it all, at a core level and on the spiritual plane, this individual is without a doubt a tentacle to the devil. If it's not for you right now, Gemini, it's against you. And people don't have to be your biggest cheerleader, but they certainly should not be standing in your way. And if they use the excuse, oh, well, I just didn't want to see you get hurt, or I didn't want to see you fail at something, you know, you're being led in a certain direction for a reason. And this individual or individuals is playing a kind of God in your life. You're supposed to go that way. If there's failure down that path, it's going to be because you need to be led in another direction. I've spoke about this in past readings, that you need to rewire how you think about failure. And it's coming up again here. Failure essentially doesn't exist in the form they want us to believe it does. Failure is the key to narrowing all the possibilities to your success, period. It's very important that you don't forget that right now, Gemini, because I feel that it's going to be what gets you through whatever this is here that you're coming up against. Switch decks. What do we have at the solar plexus, please? Six of Wands. Leo energy right there at the solar plexus. You have a victory here, Gemini. You're right where you're supposed to be. You know, Gemini, I feel that this person, these people, whoever this is to you, are being used by the divine because I feel that you've come to a point in your life where you're really being encouraged to let go of all the things that are trying to leave your life and that are not supporting you. I feel that a lot of you Geminis have really been held back by your surroundings, however that may look for you. There's just something environmental that I'm picking up for all of you. And as soon as you start letting go, it's as if the wheel starts turning for you. Things just incrementally start to pick up you see an increase in some sort of success in your life, whatever that may be. You're really being called to be open to change. I see a blank canvas on an easel with a paintbrush sitting right by it. I also see, wow, this is really vivid what I'm seeing. I also see this very clear blue sky and the easel is on a kind of hill with this really green grass and there's a breeze as well. But I don't see any trees which would indicate the breeze. I just know it's there. This is really so representative of where you're at right now, Gemini. The divine is giving you a paintbrush and a blank canvas and indicating to you this environment of peace. The wind is something I can't see. I just know it's there because that wind is telling us that you just being able to hear it without any sort of outside distraction gives the feeling of peace. This is where you're being guided to go, Gemini. That blank canvas is the next chapter in your life, and you hold the brush. You're the one that decides what colors you're going to use. You are the one that decides what you're going to paint on that canvas. All of this can speak about you stepping into a timeline where you have complete control over your reality without any sort of outside influence. I've been picking up in the Gemini Collective for quite a while. This distracting environmental energy for a lot of you it's family friends toxic parents even work environments for some of you but this new timeline that you're preparing to step into is going to present you with the opposite of everything that's held you back up until this point there's no reason you need to repeat any of the same cycles you've gathered all the wisdom that the universe needed you to gather and now it's time to move forward and close that chapter but also i'm hearing report on it it's like completing a mission but now you tell the story about the mission so that could show up differently for each and every one of you but i have a feeling that quite a lot of you have overcome some really horrendous struggle whether it be things that showed up in a physical sense or I feel for a lot of you as well it's been power struggles cycles with people that have been very manipulative things having to do with your mind and trying to control you which I mean, that's Shadow Gemini energy. Eight of Swords. It's an energy of restriction. And Eight of Swords, even though it's not on the table, it's what I'm picking up here. It's what you've overcome. It's Shadow Gemini energy.
energy. So willingly staying in a sort of restricted space based off of some sort of outside manipulative energy. This is you defeating your shadow. This is you overcoming everything that's always held you back. You know, every zodiac sign comes up against this. I'm a Scorpio. Scorpios are all about transformation, the eighth house of transformation, death and rebirth, uh, death to the old, or birth to the new, or rebirthing of self and becoming a better version of yourself. So I fully understand what it means to overcome your shadow. Because for me personally, I spent most of my life surrounded by individuals that projected a lot of fear onto me. So I couldn't step into my power and undergo the transformations that I needed to, to become the person that I am today. So in saying all that, Gemini, this is exactly what I'm picking up here for you. This is you becoming the person that the divine always intended you to be. This is what you're on the precipice of right now. And this is what this Pluto at zero degrees Aquarius also represents for you. What do we have in the heart, please? <sighs> what a perfect card to get. The world, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius energy right there at the heart position. The world, this is all about you completing the mission, closing the cycle. It's done. You've reached the end of this particular mission or cycle in your life. And again, goes along precisely with the astrology. This world also has Pluto and Aquarius energy in it. Pluto being Scorpio energy, which are both fixed energies. So these are cycles that were very hard to release yourself from. You were essentially imprisoned inside these dynamics that were keeping you from your highest good and your highest state of being, which is just another way of speaking about you being the person that you were always supposed to be. And it's at the heart chakra position. So they're highlighting forgiveness here because that's usually the final ingredient that we need to add right before we're able to close out a cycle like this in our lives. We must forgive as hard as it is sometimes. It's absolutely necessary. But forgiveness that you have within self, this is you forgiving this past version of yourself that you're transforming on from. You know, it's interesting that I brought up Scorpio and transformation because it's like you're crossing through the eighth house of transformation. This is what I'm feeling right now. You are transforming. You are becoming the phoenix that rises out of your own ashes. And I would go as far as saying that every zodiac sign is going through this in some capacity in different areas of their life right now. But for you, Gemini, this is you breaking free of an idea of what other individuals had for you. Hearing that said out loud is a terrifying statement. You may need to also say it out loud, Gemini, to understand the seriousness to this dynamic that you are now leaving behind. You are leaving behind individuals who played God in your life and or programmed a particular mindset into you, which had you running some sort of outdated program inside, let's say, your operating system, which held you back from aligning with your true north and becoming this person you were always meant to be. But Gemini, in saying all that, because hearing that, it could sound like you've missed out on something. You know, I mentioned in the Sag reading I just released that when you start going through an awakening process, you feel like you need to catch up to something. That's all part of the awakening. We feel like we've missed out on things. But the interesting part about that is this is actually all happening as it's supposed to, when it's supposed to. This couldn't have happened any sooner. It had to unfold like this. And the understanding of this is what allows you to be able to forgive yourself from not being able to see it any sooner than you did. What do we have at the throat, please? Wheel of Fortune at the throat. Eight of Cups at the third eye. Wow. Wow. Unbelievable. They're just really driving this message home, Gemini. The world and the wheel of fortune, followed by the eight of cups. This is a major karmic cycle that is closed out in your life. This wheel of fortune is representing this new life cycle you're stepping into. Your mission has been completed. This is the turning point that we are picking up here. This is leading you directly down a path that is going to allow you to fulfill your destiny. This is representing you on this precipice of change. 
it's like, here's the underworld, here's the divine, here's the wheel in the middle, right? Which represents your life. Here's the devil underneath the wheel. You're turning the wheel over the devil. The divine is taking notes, writing inside your Akashic records. The underworld is down here, putting notes in their, I don't know, in their underworld version of the Akashic records, quite possibly writing a letter to Lucifer to beg for his forgiveness, for not being able to keep you in this karmic cycle for another revolution. And I'm also picking up with this Wheel of Fortune at the throat what I mentioned in regards to you having gathered the wisdom from this cycle, closing the chapter, stepping into the new cycle, the new chapter of your life, and speaking on what you went through, or it being a part of the foundational wisdom that you've attained, which gives you some sort of steam. It gives you some sort of leg up, so to speak, in the new life cycle. There's something you've learned. There's something that you've gained from having run this cycle. And see, when you can have this perspective that every obstacle in your life can be transmuted into something positive, that you can essentially take some sort of learning experience and turn it into something that pushes you further down your path, you hold a much deeper, much more profound understanding of how life really works and how best to live it than 99.9% .9 of the people that we share this planet with, Gemini. I get an energy here of mass awakening and evolution inside the Gemini collective right now. For all the individuals that have been doing the work, you know who you are and you know whether or not you've been doing the work. This Eight of Cups, Pisces energy at the third eye. This represents everything I just spoke of. This is you fully having learned from the past and you're ready to finally move on. Withdraw your energy and make your way into the new life cycle. But the way the moon is looking at you, kind of like, hmm, yeah. I wonder if Gemini will actually go this time or if they're going to go back like they did so many other times. But something's different this time, Gemini. This red that you're wearing here, it's popping right out of that illustration there. Connects me directly to the root chakra. You have something now that you didn't have before, but I feel like it's in the form of perspective. And this perspective actually allows you to attain the tools you need to make your way into this new life cycle, this new chapter. You're wearing perspective, which you now build a new solid foundation off of your own hard work and wisdom. Pisces energy with that Eight of Cups, Sag energy with that Wheel of Fortune. There's a lot of celebration. There's a lot of victory on this table. There's a lot of blessings that are attached to this. You know, blessings are something that come very easy, Gemini. When you're walking on the path you're supposed to be on, it's not really an issue at all for the divine to make sure you have what you need because you're where you're supposed to be. You're in that allocated position in the universe that the divine needs you to be functioning out of. And this is the same as far as I'm concerned when it comes to money matters. You know, everybody wants to know when they're going to get money and this and that, and they're going to get their abundance. But what you need to understand is that is just a byproduct of you being where you're supposed to be. If you're allowing yourself to be the divine vessel that the divine needs you to be, then they can provide you with all the support you need to maintain yourself while you work inside of that space. And I can confirm this, Gemini. I went through horrendous struggles for decades in my life, all different forms of poverty. And then once I finally began to awaken to what I was supposed to be doing, and I stepped into that space, it was almost instantaneous that the divine made sure that I was provided for. And it's continued. It hasn't slowed down or stopped. It's just all increased as time has gone on. Now, what you may be feeling, because this is something that I've dealt with over the years, is the residual trauma that you feel from these past cycles. You know, when you break out of a form of lack, whether it's emotional, financial, you find that the echo of that cycle that you've closed out in your life creeps up from behind you sometimes. Uh, trauma. So it's very important that you're mindful of that, Gemini, because that echo can have a way of trying to 
re-engage you from where you came from. That echo is also holding within it all of the things that didn't allow you to get into that space much sooner. So in saying that, there's a message surrounding maintenance. You must maintain yourself inside this new cycle, this new chapter you are stepping into, Gemini. Don't forget where you came from. Don't forget what you've overcome. You're becoming the hero in your own life and you need to act as such. So you nurturing yourself, loving on yourself and maintaining yourself inside of that space needs to be your number one priority. You know, when it comes to loving on yourself and nurturing yourself, a perspective example that I like to give is thinking of yourself as two different beings. There's the you that's in the here and now, and then there's your higher self. Let's say that sitting with some virtual reality goggles on in an office at Divine Headquarters and is trying its best to control your movements down here. So that would mean that this version of you, which is in the here and now, is holographic in nature. So when you think about yourself as these two separate sort of representations of yourself, it's much easier to get into the mindset of nurturing yourself. Your higher self is nurturing your lower self. You're seeing yourself as a kind of childlike version of your higher self that has not yet attained all the knowledge that your higher being has. Hopefully, you'll be able to understand what I'm trying to explain to you there, and it will give you a much-needed perspective over how you go about loving yourself, Gemini. What do we have with the crown, please? Two of Swords, Libra energy at the crown. I feel like we just went right back to the energy I was picking up at the beginning of the reading. This Two of Swords is representing where you're at right now. This is that crossroads. There's the path that leads you in the direction of your north node, that allocated position that you're supposed to be in in the universe. And there's the path that detours you back to the same cycle that you're being encouraged to move on from now. And it's right next to that Eight of Cups. So it's like the moon is saying, I wonder if Gemini is going to take the right path or the left path. They haven't seen Gemini take the right path yet. You know, I mentioned in the Sag reading that going back has always been a kind of safe space. Let's just say, even though for quite a lot of you, that safe space is very toxic in nature, it's just something you've always known. It's something that you're used to, you know what to expect, but it's not in alignment with your highest self. It's in alignment with your south node, which speaks in volumes when it's a cycle that you've always gone back to. It's like you've always gone back to the devil because you've been discouraged or quite possibly been fearful of taking the unknown path, which is the right-hand path here. Now, as you can see here, you're also wearing these yellow socks or slippers, which is connecting us to the solar plexus here, which is this energy of victory. I just heard so clearly, your feet are pointing in the direction that you should be going, but your mind is still stuck in the past. So this can be you having put a plan in place. It's like you're looking down the path you should be going, but you haven't stepped onto it yet. But going back to what I was mentioning in regards to the Sag reading that we picked up was everything that you once knew, Gemini, that toxic safe space, which is just such a odd phrase to hear myself saying, toxic safe space, no longer exists. And this is because of this astrological transit. So the option for you going back now isn't even really there because what's kept you from going down the right-hand path is that you felt like you were taking a chance on something that may not go in your favor. But now all the energy has been flipped. So in saying that, what you have always known and what you have always gotten from that left-hand path and what you have always received from that left-hand path doesn't even exist there anymore. It's something much darker. It's the upside down now. There's just something, there's something off. So it's like you go there and immediately it's not what you've always expected or what you've always known, it's actually completely foreign, which is telling me that the action of you being on the precipice of change and then deciding to go back has some sort of an influential effect on what you're leaving behind and everything just becomes increasingly worse. And there's so many things that this can speak on, but for a lot of you, this does have to do with some sort of toxic relationship you're in. It could be with family as well. For example, you're leaving behind somebody and you go back and they've been promising you that 
things will change or they're trying to dangle a carrot in front of your face and then you go back and they treat you a hundred times worse than they ever did or everything is just completely shifted and the person is just unbearable to be around. Something like this. So it's very important, Gemini, that you take a chance on yourself this time around because I'm getting nothing but a very positive, sure thing kind of energy when you go down this new path. It's all about new energy, Gemini. Say yes to everything new and refuse all the old energies that brought nothing but pain, strife, and resistance into your life. None of it's changed and none of it's going to. It's you that needs to be the change in your own life, period. There's no other way around it. Right as I said that, Gemini, my left ear equalized. It gave me the feeling of a cord being severed with a very low vibrational kind of energy. That may speak to some of you on a deep level. What do we have at the foundation, please? Strength. Vine. Leo energy. This is strength in its shadow polarity, right underneath that four of wands. I just heard now we see the face of the devil. Right? Right here we see the devil's back. I just heard... This is the venom that the devil is spitting at you. So what this particular card means, strength in its shadow polarity, all has to do with self-doubt. You suppressing the urge to go down this path based off of this venom that this devil is spitting at you. Right underneath that four of wands, that celebratory energy. For a lot of you, this is all related to some sort of plan you've put together, an idea of something. And then this energy comes through and crushes your dreams, your plans, whatever this may be for you. What do we have at the sacral, please? The world, Vapula. So we have the world twice now. Wow. This is in shadow polarity right here, right underneath that devil. This devil's trying to do everything they can to stop you from closing out this cycle. Here you are closing the cycle, and here's the cycle right here not closing because of this venom that this devil is spitting. And it's at that sacral position. I feel like for a lot of you, you have somebody, I picked this up in the Sag reading too. There's somebody who's trying to make you feel sorry for them. Ah, wow. I mentioned up here that if you go back to what you think you've always known, even though it's very toxic, I mentioned that it's not the same anymore. Something's changed. What I'm getting here is, see how this person is injured, right? It's like you go back and whoever this is lays something on you. Uh, I'm sick. I've come down with something. I've broken my arm. I need help. It's something that they burden you with that makes it impossible for you to move forward. But what is so frustrating about this is you had your foot out the door. And that's what they meant by you had your feet pointing in the direction that you know you were supposed to be going. This is a trap, but it's a very good one because seemingly it does pull you back in. There's something here that feels permanent. It feels indefinite. It's like somebody making themselves sick in some way, shape, or form. Could be physical. Could be mental. It could be many different things. But they do it so you can't move on. And this has been sent by way of the devil. See how the devil looks like he's on the stage and he's talking to all his minions like a crowd of minions? It's like he's telling his minions what they need to do. Telling his minions the tactics that they need to utilize to stop you from closing out the cycle, turning the wheel on him, and stepping into alignment with your true north. 
What a reading. Very, very deep, but very detailed, the way they're giving this to me. All right, what do we have with the solar plexus? I got that same card in the Sag reading. I think it was here. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius energy, Queen of Swords, Andrelphus. And this is the Queen of Swords in its shadow polarity. This is the pathological liar of the tarot, right? It's a donkey holding up peacock feathers behind their back. Ah, yes, I have peacock feathers growing out of my back. This person is reading from a script. This person is fulfilling their orders from the devil to stop you from stepping into the six of wands at the solar plexus. You know, there's a depth to this reading, but for a lot of you, you're being kept from something that is important, okay? It's like this one action keeps you from going down a particular path that the divine needs you to go down that has a influential effect, let's say, inside the collective. I believe that each one of us is meant to create shifts in different areas of your life. The divine guides you down these paths to create kinds of influences, right? Domino effects that have an influential effect over the collective at large. And the devil sends all these distractions into our life to stop us from creating these domino effects inside the collective. But instead, engaging us with domino effects that work in the opposite direction. So simply put, it's the devil sending you down the opposite direction of your actual path, right? The left-hand path. You become an influence for the devil in his bidding, and you don't even know it. This is why it's so incredibly important to go after these true heart's desires, why it's so incredibly important to not allow other individuals to influence how you move inside your waking life, and why it's so incredibly important to distance yourself from individuals who try to play God in your life. I sometimes wonder if people fully understand the repercussions of their ego or their narcissism. What do we have at the heart? And you know, some would say that they know exactly what they're doing because that's actually the definition of narcissism. They know exactly what they're doing to you and it makes them feel powerful, especially when they know they're keeping you from something that has been divinely ordered for you to fulfill in this lifetime. And then we have Balaam, which is the page of wands in its shadow, false promises. So this is speaking on what I was picking up here, the lie. For some of you, it could be literal false promises. Oh, Gemini, just come back. You know, I can, I can give you this or that or, you know, well, it'll be different this time. Something like this. Now. It will most certainly be different when you go back, just like I picked up. It will be way worse. They'll go in harder, whatever it is. You'll feel completely trapped, like you don't even have the option anymore to leave. Before, you were keeping yourself in this sort of self-imposed kind of space. You stayed. But now, because you're on the precipice of change, you have the divine backing you up as well as the astrology, to go back would be a whole different ballgame. And this is what this is representing right here. It's a complete dead end. And, you know, the fact that this energy here knows that you have the capacity within you to want these changes, and they know how much you put into trying to make this change come through for yourself this time, they've taken note of all of this. And this is why, again, you trying to leave after you go back again will be so impossible to do because now they know how you move. And then we have Nine of Wands, Sag Energy, Ha'asia, Universal Medicine, speaks on everything that we've channeled through up until this point. This is you saying no, keeping boundaries with these individuals, pushing forward 
despite any of the setbacks that you think you're going to face, which you're not going to this time, Gemini. The divine is clearing the path for you. Before, you were so scared about stepping into the unknown or going in a direction where you didn't know what to expect. But I feel that once you start making your way in that direction, you'll quickly find that the support you feel around you from the divine is so overwhelming and so embracing that you just have all this excitement and hunger for the future that starts flooding through. The paranoia just starts to spill away. You're being asked to have faith here, Gemini. But I think a lot of you have gotten to the point where anything is better than what you've always had inside this particular cycle. To go back would just be complete madness for a lot of you. And right here it says universal medicine, so it really speaks about what I said. The divine clearing the path for you. And it even looks like an angel clearing the path, right? surrounding you with universal medicine, love, healing, support, and encouragement. What do we have at the throat, please? Six of wands again. So we have it twice. Leo energy. Shahia, God who took evil, longevity, protects against infirmities. Victory. Confirmation after confirmation, Gemini, of this path being a sure thing for you. If this resonates with you, you've been doing the work and you've been guided in this direction. This is what we're getting here. It's very clear. Success is within reach. You find your crown and sit on your throne, which was just another way of speaking about you finally arriving back home or you just feeling content yourself in a space that has been waiting for you this entire time. Again, this is representing you stepping into that allocated position. And it's right underneath that wheel of fortune. There's also an inspiring story of overcoming something here that I'm picking up. Especially wheel of fortune, six of wands at the throat. Speaking truth, writing truth, singing truth, whatever it is, or just living your truth. Uh-huh. What do we have at the third eye, please? Wow. The way that card came out. The tower, Uriel. It's like you arrive back to where you came from, so to speak. You arrive at your home, and you're like, oh my God. This is where I was actually supposed to be. The tower, Uriel, the fire of God, disruption, warns of disasters, aids in transformation. And it's like you get the memo from the divine. You're looking back over this past cycle and you're starting to see that you were actually imprisoned by the devil or one of the devil's minions, rather. This is how you always look at these cycles in some capacity when you move on from them. You see them as a form of mind control or some sort of lower vibrational energy that was keeping you imprisoned inside of a space that was not allowing you to align with your highest good in this life cycle, which arms you with a whole different perspective over the individuals you were dealing with inside of this particular cycle. You just don't even look at life the same anymore moving forward. Your third eye is completely opened and you're seeing truth in a way that you never have in your entire life, Gemini. Mars, Scorpio, Aries energy with that tower at the third eye. What do we have at the crown, please? Too many cards. What do we have at the crown to close up, Gemini? Wheel of Fortune again at the crown to close out the reading. Metatron, the recording angel, advancement and progress, teaches, guides, and records events in the book of life. Right? So here they are logging these events in the book of life. The divine saying to you, Gemini, right hand path. This is how you step into the new life cycle. The devil is at the end of the left-hand path. There's nothing there for you. There's nothing left to see. You've gathered all the wisdom that you needed to gather. It's time to move on, Gemini. There's a whole force around you, Gemini, 
that is trying to stop you. It's very strong, but you need to remember you have a lot of support and protection around you as well. The divine is doing everything they can to make sure that you step on that right-hand path and you start making your way towards your north node. It's all over this reading. All they're asking you to do is help them help you. And don't do what you've always done. Allow them to bring this new, beautiful energy into your life and step into this new chapter. Gemini, this is the message I have available to you, depending on where you are on this timeline, should you choose to accept. I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you would like a personal reading, you can find all of my contact details in the description below this video. And thank you for your donations, Gemini. Take care.